Hello there everyone and welcome to a new review on the channel and today we are looking at a product that I didn't see myself reviewing because I wasn't so odd about it when I initially saw it but I needed something around $25 to add to get free shipping and I decided to pick it up and see what it had because I was a big Pokemon fan growing up and even though I, I wasn't really mesmerized by the routine I was interested in just seeing how Kind of it unfolds and, and see the instructions and etc and that is of course Pokemon T by Michael O'Brien and Deuce Gala Magic and I have to say that I was surprised when I got it of how much I enjoyed it compared to how I thought I was going to enjoy it so I, I'm really excited to make a small review on this and to talk more about it so let's roll the intro and get straight into the review. Perfect, so you decide to stick around, which means you want to learn more about Pokemon. Now, what is Pokemon? Pokemon is the classic uh, kind of Monty routine. You know, the older one that had the like the blue diamond and the red diamonds, and you had to always find the odd one out. I believe the odd one out is always the blue diamond. And then every time you would have all of them being red, all of them being blue, but then all of them being red again. And then you would do the, another phase and you would show that one of the cards actually says, hold up, you owe me $14. So it's a classic spin on a very, uh, you know, classic trick of color Monty, but spinned with Pokemon cards, which I think is interesting to some. So uh, to better explain it to you, what better way than to do a small performance? So let's run a clip of me doing the effect for you. Okay, so let's do a small performance of Pokemon T. So what I have here inside of the wallet is I have uh, three cards, three Pokemon cards. Is anyone here familiar with Pokemon? Uh, you, sir, you know some of them, like, uh, who do you know? You know Pikachu, that's very nice. Who do you know? You know Charmander, Charmander, we're going to talk about him in a moment. He's very, very popular, right? Because of uh, Charizard and like kind of the craze with all the the expensive cards in recent memory where people were selling their old cards for a lot of money, right? And so I see there's some people that know a bit and some people that don't know. So from the people that don't know, just so you know, there's uh, fire, water, and earth that you get to choose from at the start of kind of the game. So you, ma'am, what would you choose if you were to choose fire, water, earth? You would choose water. Now that's very interesting because most people choose fire and the least people choose earth. So water is kind of in between. And that's very interesting. We're gonna get to that in a moment. But what I want to show everyone here is something that would happen when I would go with my friend to our local card store. Essentially, the guy behind the counter would always play tricks on us, always, until one day when I decided to play a trick on him. So essentially what he would do is he knew I really liked to play Pokemon. So he would always make sure that I don't get what I want. So he had a different choices. He had Bulbasaur, so he could choose Bulbasaur, which is the one that no one wanted. That was the Earth. You could choose Charmander, which is the one that everyone wants, which was the fire. Or you could choose Squirtle, which is if you don't get Charmander, it's always better to have Squirtle than, than, than Bulbasaur, right? So you would have these three choices. But when it was my turn to choose, he would always make me get the one that I never wanted, which was Bulbasaur. So let's say I would say I want the card on the bottom. He would show me, oh, well, you got Bulbasaur. So then let's say... I would say, okay, but then give me the card on the top. Well, the card on the top was Bulbasaur as well. But then let's say I would say, okay, uh, give me the card in the middle. Then he'd say, okay, the card in the middle is, well, Bulbasaur. So you get to choose Bulbasaur. So he would always play that trick on me. Then for my friend, he would go in between. He would tell them, so where do you want? If my friend would say on the bottom, well, he would get Squirtle. If my friend would say, well, I want the top, then he would get Squirtle as well. And if he were to choose the middle, well, my friend would get Squirtle as well. And then when it, it was his turn to choose, he would always make sure he gets Charmander. So if he were to choose the bottom, well, guess what? He would get Charmander. If he were to choose the top, he would also get Charmander. And if he were to choose the middle, he would also always get Charmander. So it was impossible to win. So then at one point you told him, okay, but you're using nine cards, you're tricking us. And he would say, no, 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 look, I'm using one, two, and three cards only, nothing more, just three cards. So then we were kind of annoyed. So he would say, okay, guys, I'm choosing first. So I'm choosing Charmander because I get to pick first, I get to choose Charmander. He would then go 
to my friend and he would say, okay, then you get the second choice, you get Squirtle. So you get Squirtle, that's your second choice. And then he would say, of course, to me, he would hand me the card and he'd say, well, guess who you got, Sebastian? And I would be upset, but on that day, right, everyone can guess why I would be, why I would be upset, right? Because I got Bulbasaur. But on that day, I did told you that I was gonna play a trick on him because if everyone thought that I was gonna get Bulbasaur, no one expected me to pull up with a rare Pikachu. And that's a real story, by the way, but as interesting as that is as well, someone named an element at the start, right? And I removed the cards from this wallet and inside you can see there's only one extra card, nothing else. And you could have named any of the elements and you named water, right? And there it is, water, the element that you named. So that is a quick performance of the effect. So let's uh, continue with the review. Okay, so now that you've seen a performance of Poke Monty, let's talk about where you buy this, how much does it cost, and what do you get. So you can buy this pretty much anywhere. It's available at uh, pretty much any magic store. I got mine from Vanishing Ink, but if you want, for example, to get yours from Alakazam Magic, you can use the discount down below. You can also get it directly from Michael O'Brien at Deuce Gala Magic uh, directly if you so want or maybe from your local magic shop as well. This will set you back 25 USD, which is around 32 Canadian dollars. And what you get is this small envelope, right? This small kind of uh, pack envelope. Inside of this envelope, you're gonna get, uh, the first thing that you're gonna see is this, which is the instructions. So you're gonna get the instructions for this on this card. The instructions are very well shot. They're very thorough. Michael O'Brien explains everything in detail. They're also short, they're not super long. You get also close up, you get rewind features, you get a PDF, you get uh, performances. Everything here is very, very well thought out and explained incredibly. There's nothing that you're ever going to miss. Then you're gonna get some energy cards for these kind of kicker ending where the choice of the spectator plays out. You're gonna get, of course, a water, air, a water, earth, and fire one, okay? So you get uh, these, and then you also get your Pokemon cards, which are, of course, uh, Pikachu, Squirtle, Charmander, and Bulbasaur. So you get all those, of course, here. There's no gimmicks at play. It's only sleight of hand, but we're gonna talk about that in a moment. So this is what you get. You get that with the instructions. You get your four main Pokemon cards, and you get three element cards. That's what you get with your purchase. So. Having said that, let's talk about difficulty. How difficult is this to do? Uh, it's very not that difficult. The moves here are pretty simple. You just have to learn the routine. That's pretty much it. Once you learn the routine, everything flows well. And the routine is really pretty simple. And also the routine uses the same moves over and over, right? Because as you saw, the first, second, and third phase use the same exact routine, pattern, and move, and kind of slides. So. Once you learn the routine and you learn that kind of main slight that is needed, then you're pretty much ready to go. So I wouldn't say this is more than intermediate. I'd e I would even say lower. So I'd say like in between beginner and intermediate. It's really, really easy. It's nothing too complicated or too hard. So um, yeah, it's it's pretty, pretty simple. And on in my honest opinion, to do, there's not much... Uh, mega slides you're going to have to learn except that Monty move. Then for the second phase with the um, with the prediction, if you want to do that, then that's going to depend on you and your kit and how you want to do it. For example, Michael O'Brien does it with a fire wallet. So he brings that and he brings a few additional stuff with him. So it's going to, you're going to have to do a few things extra, not hard, but those are going to be things that you want to carry. And depending on your tools, it could be as easy or as complicated as you want. But it's it's still pretty, pretty easy. There's nothing too complicated about it. So having said that, what is the practicality of Pokemon? -ty? Well, to do Pokemon, -ty, you're just going to need these four cards. You place them inside of a sleeve or like myself, I carry them inside of the wallet uh, just like this. I put them in, like in the lip of the wallet so that they're they can be seen from the start. And this also lets me, for those that know what this is, it also lets me directly do the second phase without any fumble and everything is in play from the start on the table. 
So that's uh, what the wallet is. That's not included, by the way. But that's how I carry it around. So it's not much to carry around. Everything fits basically in the lip of this wallet for me. So I just place this wallet here or in my case and I'm good to go. So nothing uh, much in terms of carrying. In terms of angles, also angle wise is pretty good. I'd say 360 degrees. There's no issues with angles. In terms of inspectability, um, technically everything is inspectable. The the card here is inspectable. Uh, the card there, the Pikachu is inspectable as well. And if ever, right, they really want to inspect the cards on the table, they could maybe do it, right? It's no problem even though it may kind of give away a bit of the routine that you had more than three cards. But I do think that if ever someone really goes and rushes to grab them without your consent, I don't think it's going to ruin the effect because there's no gimmicks really at play. And I think that even the specter, right, depending how you frame it, because for me, I frame it like that guy was tricking us, right, by doing some sleight of hand and always having us choose the bad one. So the fact that they're going to see there was four cards technically, uh, with the Pikachu doesn't really deter, but I wouldn't really have them inspect there. I would just, after I produce Pikachu, just remove them, place them in my pocket and then do the second phase. But if ever someone, you know, <whistles> rushes to grab them, I don't think it ruins uh, the effect that much. So they're inspectable because uh, as I mentioned, they're just normal Pokemon cards, right? So saying that also regarding refills, right? If you want to do this effect, you're maybe thinking that, oh, you're going to have to buy uh, the trick again and that is yes if you want to do it with these specific cards then yes so if you want to have Bulbasaur, Charmander, uh, Pikachu and Squirtle yes you're gonna have to buy it again but if you're someone that is a bit knowledgeable around Pokemon or knows Pokemon you could do this with anything you want you could just go to your local store buy a booster pack for like $3.49 and then choose from that booster pack four cards and do it with that Right. So you could say, oh, when I was small, my favorite was always this. I always hated this one. And the one that was in between was always this. But my all time favorite was the rarest one to get, which was this. Right. And then you just do the routine with those other cards and then you do the same kicker, etc. So, right. You could do this even with other cards that are not these, which is going to is just going to change the scripting a bit of the pattern, the story that you tell, which is not a major issue. So instead of having to buy twenty five dollars over and over to get these cards only, you could just go buy a booster pack from your local shop and do it with the cards from there. The routine is going to play out the same and it's going to have the same impact on the spectator. So I did want to mention that as a thing for you to know. And for the energy cards as well, for those that are not familiar with Pokemon cards, you get energy cards in every pack. So if you buy a pack, you're going to get some energy cards, but these you barely even touch them. So these are going to pretty much last an incredibly long time. Okay. So additionally, um, if there's anything else to say about practicality was of course kind of the thing that I kind of mentioned with refills is that these are just normal cards. They're not plastic version or anything. They're real Pokemon cards, which means that they're going to wear down eventually. So you do have to keep that in mind and also don't bend them or break them because they're just made out of paper. So having said that, where would you perform this effect? Where would you perform Pokemon T? And Pokemon T is definitely not something you're going to do uh, for an incredibly big crowd or on stage or in a parlor or cabaret setting. To me, personally, it's something you do uh, that you have with you and you do if ever someone asks you to do something for their kid or anything like that. Personally, I wouldn't do this routine if I'm like, if there's only adults at the venue, I wouldn't pull out Pokemon and do it. I would do probably stand up Monty, right? But if ever, because even I, like for those that know, I don't perform for kids. Uh, because I, I'm not really good with that. I don't own many kid magic tricks, but I do have one or two in my case, in case I go to a table or at a wedding or something and there's some kids, sometimes the parents are like, can you please, please, please do something for my kid? This is going to be perfect because this is not only going to entertain the kid, but the whole table as well, because it is relatable, right? So even though, let's say I know I'm going to perform at a restaurant, right? Like a high end restaurant. I'm not going to bring Pokemon tea with me, but if I am going, for example, I know I'm going to be performing at a family restaurant or at a family gathering or at someone's birthday where people bring their kids or at a wedding where people bring their kids. Pokemon tea is always going to be in my case 
to perform to uh to have there in case someone is like oh can you show something for my kid as well or if you meet not necessarily kids but like early teens like maybe 12 13 14 15 year olds this could definitely also be relatable to them as well so it's nice to have in your arsenal this type of effect so i would say definitely this works for table hopping anything like that it's almost instant reset there's no issue about that as well so I would say anything table hopping, anything online, if you want to do this for camera online, for your Zoom shows or for your Insta or TikTok, you can do it for that. But pretty much anywhere table hopping, I wouldn't necessarily do this like on stage or something like that, but really versatile in that regard as well. So having said all of this, what are the positives and negatives of this routine? So one of the negatives since we're going to start with the negatives, is that not everyone is familiar with Pokemon and maybe a lot of magicians aren't familiar with Pokemon, which is going to make them not want to buy this effect. So if you buy this effect, I would say be familiar with Pokemon. It's going to make the routine 10 times better for you and for the spectators. So that's one thing that you have to keep in mind. And the second possible negative that uh, I can find about this is that even though it, when you perform it yourself, it kind of makes it work better. But I do think that the color Monty move, which is used for the color Monty, is a bit of a fishy move. Uh, for example, when I did this to people closer to me, so not like random spectators, when I was doing the move, they were like, eh? They were like, they didn't say it, but you could see that they were like, what is he doing? So to me, I think that when I saw it in video, it kind of, I had that same reaction. I was like, you know, why is he turning the top card over like that? And I think that once you buy it, you kind of understand why, and it's actually not as bad as you may think, but it's still something that if you're performing to maybe family or friends or people that are familiar with you doing magic, it's gonna stand out more to them than it does to a casual spectator. So keep that in mind as well. So having said that, what are the positives of Pokemon T? One, the instructions are really, really good. Two, the routine is really well layered and really well structured in terms of how it works. It's relatively easy as well. The cards that you get are great. Also, if ever you need refills, you can just buy a booster pack and do it with that. Uh, the second phase is also really cool. It comes as a small kicker. The kicker of the routine with the Pikachu card is great because most people only know Pikachu. Even if you know nothing about Pokemon, most people know Pikachu, so they're going to name it and you tell them, but today I decide to play um, a joke on him with what you said, sir. You said you knew one Pokemon, Pikachu, which is why I decided to include a Pikachu, right? So it's really well thought out in that regard. It's inexpensive. It's 360. It plays well for kids and adults at the same time. So it's very nice in that regard as well. So it has a lot of good going for it. So would I recommend Pokemon T and what would I rate out of 10? So this is a bit where it gets tricky because I would recommend it if you are familiar with Pokemon. So if you're someone that loved Pokemon or still loves Pokemon, I'd say buy this because if you love something and you show it to your spectator thinking that, oh, they may not like it because it's Pokemon, it's, it's not going to appeal to anyone. If you're invested in it and they see that you're interested in it, everyone knows about Pokemon or they've heard about Pokemon anyway. So it's still going to be a good trick. But if you're someone that doesn't know anything about Pokemon, doesn't care about Pokemon, and is just trying to buy something to do at a kid's show because it's Pokemon themed and has no interest in learning anything about Pokemon, then I don't think this is for you. And it's going to show that you're not familiar with this and that the story that you're saying is absolutely bollocks, right? It's absolutely BS because they're going to know that and they're going to see that you know nothing about what you're talking about. So... I wouldn't recommend it if you're not a fan of Pokemon or know nothing about Pokemon and you're unwilling to learn about Pokemon. However, if you have any knowledge about them, I think that this routine is very nice to have in your case on a case-by-case -case scenario. Of course, if you're a kids performer and you know about Pokemon, go ahead, you're gonna work towards this beyond. But if you're someone like me that doesn't really perform for kids, just having the option to have Pokemon tea in my case is great and I would recommend it. I would rate it an eight out of 10. I think it's great and I am going to use it. So yeah, that's all I have to say about Pokemon T. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. If not, like and subscribe and I'll see everyone in my next review. Have a good one.